In this New World video, we're going to be taking a look at the factions of New World, going over the three factions, which are Syndicate, Marauder, and Covenant, talking about why you might choose one of them, and what the benefits of choosing a faction are, and how it affects the game world. As you progress the main storyline in New World, usually about an hour or two into the game, if that's just the first thing that you do, you'll be asked to choose a faction to join, and you'll get to go talk to people from Marauders, people from Covenant, people from uh, Syndicate, uh, representative of each, and then you'll be asked to make a decision. This is an important decision to the game because it affects a lot of things in the world. Once you select your faction, factions cannot be changed for 120 days. That means you will have to wait four months before that character can switch to another faction. And since you can't have a second character on the same server, that means you have to delete that character if you don't want to wait that four months and create a new character. This makes this a very important decision and one that you shouldn't take lightly. Make sure you know what faction your friends are playing in. Make sure you know who you want to play with, who you want to play against. And don't make the decision the second you're prompted if you don't know. You could wait and, you know, play the game, do other questing and things, and then come back to this decision if you aren't sure. Let's get into the benefits of joining a faction. The first benefit is that you can PvP. You literally cannot PvP in this game unless you join a faction. That means that if you want to get involved in PvP at all, you're going to have to pick one. And even if you delay this decision a bit, which is fine, eventually you'll have to choose one if you want to get involved in open world PvP or large scale wars or outpost rush or whatever because it pits factions versus factions in these events, and if you don't have a faction, then you're basically a wild card that anyone can attack, and that's not a thing in this game. So you cannot PvP unless you choose a faction. Even if you aren't a PvP player and you have no interest in PvP, you cannot join a company unless you join a faction. Companies are essentially the equivalent of guilds in the game. They have a 100-man roster that you can fill up and assign roles to, you know, different ranks. You can dump gold into them, you can share that or use that to buy outposts as a company. So unless you don't want to join a company, then you're going to have to join a, a faction as well. So keep that in mind. Something to keep in mind is that you'll PvP with your faction, but you can still do the expeditions or the dungeons of the game with other factions. So if for some reason you screw up and get it wrong and you're not really a PvP player, keep in mind that you'll still be able to PvP with your friends, even if you can't be in the same company with that. However, I highly advise you coordinate with whoever you're going to play this game with ahead of time. That way you are the right faction, that you can join the companies with your friends, and that way you don't have any problems and you don't get to like level 11 or something, have to delete your character and then go make another one because you got the, you know, the wrong one or something. Plan a little bit ahead, and that's a reason that we're getting this video out a little bit early to help inform you about that. Within the first few days of launch, you're going to see the map, the world map, start to change colors in different territories, signifying that certain factions are in control of those territories, whether it's green, gold, or purple. Certain factions are going to take control of these, and when they take control of these, they're going to set the tax rate, they're going to upgrade the town, and it's going to be a company from that faction that's in charge of that specific outpost. There are benefits to controlling an area. For instance, fast travel costs are cheaper. If you have two controlling territories, you can set it up so that you can pull from storages in either territory, no matter which one that you're in, which is not the case if these are not controlled. So there are advantages to this, and ideally you would be involved in a faction that is winning uh, the domination of these territories, or at least has a few of these territories under their control. If you have none, it's going to be a rather rough road. Talking about taxes, the company that controls an outpost, no matter which faction, is going to be able to set the tax rates. Generally, in the first few days, they set the tax rates sky high. The reason for this is because they can make millions of gold, the company that controls the territory, can make millions of gold in one day. That means that they'll be so far ahead of other companies, unless those companies take territories as well, that they'll be able to go take other outposts for themselves, and they'll be off to a really good start and get ahead of everyone. So people are generally going to rush a territory, pull all their money together, buy it, and then rake, jack up the taxes, rake in the money, and then go try and buy a bunch of territories and get off to a quick start. So if you want to avoid high taxes for crafting or trading, make sure you head to a settlement that has lower tax rates. This may be hard to find in the earlier days of the game, but as it progresses, you should see more and more as people shy away from towns that have high tax rates and move to the ones that have lower ones. So the question then becomes, besides avoiding that town, how do you get rid of this territory? How do you take it back over if a competing faction asset? Well, what you do is you go do PvP quests in that town or your faction does. Anyone from your faction can do them. You go to your particular faction uh, representative in that city or town and you talk to them you take the pvp quests and you go do them and as you do this you progress a bar and once that bar reaches 100 percent you can declare war on that fort this takes a lot of effort meaning that you need the combined efforts of your faction to do this or if you have a large guild you'll probably need everybody to do this and the quests are the same every time so what's really interesting about this is once you know the quests for an area you will always know the quests there may be more added over time i don't know but it makes for an interesting scenario because 
This allows competing factions to know where you're going to go, or for you to know where competing factions are going to go to try and take over a town, which means that you can lay an ambush around um, along these routes and stop them because they have to go to the same place every time. It's not like, where are they going to go? They're always going to go to the same place. This makes for really interesting PvP along these routes. So learn what they are if you like to PvP, and be careful when you do these routes because if you know these routes, chances are other factions know these routes, and they're going to be waiting for you. Once you max your bar out at 100%, you'll be able to declare war. If your company contributed at least 10% of that bar, you'll be able to declare war, and you'll be asked to submit a certain amount of money to bid on this war. You can basically bid on a small, medium, or large-sized war, and I believe it prioritizes the most money. I'm not entirely certain. So if you really want to give yourself the best chance to control this war, you're going to donate as much money as you can. You can pull that from your guild bank. So make sure right before you declare war, or you have like a 10-minute period to declare war, make sure once you can that everyone in your company pulls money into your company bank. That way you can declare war on the largest one. And it'll basically roll off amongst all the companies and someone will get selected to run it. So if you get selected to run the war, basically you're going to allocate the people that are involved in the war. Um, because this has a lot of effort from your company usually, or if you're one of the companies involved in doing it, people tend to prioritize their company. That means if your company gets it and you're you know, in your company, there's a much better chance you're going to be able to go to that war than if some other company gets it. It's a good idea to be nice to your fellow faction mates because that will increase your chances of getting in if a company that's not yours gets into it. So play nice. Otherwise, you may be excluded from these all the time because you have an attitude problem. So keep that in mind. And definitely bid on it if you can. That way you can get in control and you can get your you know, fellow uh, company mates in and you can get anyone else on the server that asks if you can. So after you declare war or when you're declaring war, you're basically going to schedule a time for this war. It's usually the following day sometime. You're going to pick a time window. You can actually set your company's time window for when you want to declare war. So like your wars for your company will always be between X and Y period of time. That will train your company to be able to, you know, realize when wars are going to be to always be around and available because if they're not online a little bit before the war begins, they won't be able to get into it. So you can set the time range for that and it's usually going to be like the following day or the day after. And of course, if you win that war, uh, which is like a, usually a big battle, it's like a siege on a fort, then you're going to be able to control that fort and you'll be able to set the tax rate whatever you want. You'll be able to rake in the gold or lower the tax rate to help out people. That's all up to you. There's another part to factions as well besides the PvP quest, and this is the PvE quest. There are PvP and PvE faction quests, and what they do is they increase your reputation with that faction, and then at certain breakpoints you'll have like quests you need to do to be able to unlock the next part, and then once you hit the cap there, you'll have to do another quest to unlock the next part. But as you progress through these ranks, you're going to unlock better and better equipment that you can use, and you also get a currency that allow you to purchase things that you can get from these vendors along with gold as needed. So you can get better and better equipment, and the faction gear at level 15, the very first gear you can get, is some of the best equipment you can get at that level in the game. So if you really need good equipment early on and you're not sure whether to craft or try and, you know, squeeze out some dungeons at really low level with somebody that's like level 20 or something, I don't even know if you can do it at level 15. But if you're like right around the level 15, level 16, 17, 18 level, do some faction quests if you haven't done already before because there's some really good gear at those lower levels, and it's definitely the best you can get for a little while. And remember to do the quests. If you are not gaining any more reputation, then you need to do the faction quests to lift that cap. The first one is usually way far away, like in Brightwood somewhere. So by the time you unlock that, in my experience, if you do like five or six faction quests, you're not even really near the level you need to go to that area. So if you're going to go you know, unlock that cap to the next one, get some friends from your faction or some of your friends from your company to come with you, because usually you'd be way under leveled for that first quest for some reason, and you may need a little bit of help getting it done. Moving along to why you might choose one faction over another, you have the Green Marauders, the Purple Syndicate, and the Gold Covenant. The Marauders are basically like, you know, all about war and winning via force. So the differences between these factions are really just like their philosophy. Uh, the Marauders are about war, the Syndicate's about science, and the Covenant is about, you know, holy vengeance and burning people at the stake. So you kind of got to choose between like which one of these you want based on that. There isn't a lot of difference otherwise. Uh, the faction gear previously, um, before a recent patch, was all different, meaning that some factions had better gear than others, but now they've all been standardized to be the same. So that doesn't play a factor in which faction you choose. So it really kind of comes down to personal preference in terms of like which philosophy do you align with. And also, maybe you join a server, you know, I don't know, a couple, two, three, four days into the game, maybe a week into the game, maybe two weeks into the game. Have a look at the map. See what's going on with the map before you decide which faction. Maybe Covenant and Syndicate are dominating that, and there's no territories that Marauders have. That might not be the best faction to join if they're absolutely getting bullied into a corner, so maybe you want to join Syndicate or Covenant instead. 
as I mentioned, fast travel is cheaper. You can use storage from other things that are connected, other territories that are connected to your territory if you have control of them. So there's reasons why it would be good for you to have a faction that's succeeding on the server that you're playing on. Unless you want to play the underdog. I'm a huge fan of playing the underdog, and that's totally fine. But you definitely better get some organization going on if you're going to try and do that. I, myself, and the rest of the Fex for Life company are going to be joining the Covenant on the Hades EU server. So if you want to come join us and purge the heretics from the land, please feel free to do so. We'll try and get as many people in as we can. As I mentioned, there's a 100-person limit, so this is kind of going to be first come, first serve. And if we have overflow, we'll probably just put together a second or third company as necessary. So there you have it. That's everything I know about factions in New World. There isn't really any reason to join any other faction uh, than any other one except Covenant because you know they're the best. So make sure you coordinate with your friends and make sure you guys end up in the same faction, which should be Covenant because they're the best. And I will see you guys out there on launch day.